Hi, my name is Brett Higgins and uh, I'm on a tour with Great Lakes Swimmers and um, we're playing Shoeless tonight here in Chicago and I'm here to talk a little bit about some of my gear. This is uh, actually kind of a, a quite an interesting uh, stand-up base in that uh, it was built by a guy in Nashville named Charlie Chadwick and it's called the Chadwick Folding Base. And what's unique about this particular instrument is uh, from all appearances it is an upright base. However, uh, if you flip it around here, you will see that there's a slot in the back and the entire base collapses and the neck rotates back into this slot and closes and then it fits into that case over there. It weighs 50 pounds on the nose, which is the acceptable limit for checked luggage. So it's really the only way an upright bass player can fly uh, these days. And that uh, sounds like, you know, upright base and kind of does the job. I guess I probably use the upright on about 65-70% of the material in this band. Um, the strings uh, that I use, I use Tomastic strings for all my instruments. These are Tomastic Spiracores, which are kind of uh, a pretty staple string for upright basses. Um, I change the strings about once a year on this bass, maybe every nine months because I'm putting the bass together every day, every time we play a show. So the strings get stretched out and then they contract. So they kind of wear out a little bit. These are a little bit, they're almost due. If you can get in there, you can see they're starting to really thin out at the tips. Um, so yeah, and it's got a Fishman pickup that uh, lies underneath here. Um, to amplify this guy, I run it through the uh, Boss tuner, which just acts as a signal kill and, and to of course keep me in tune. Um, and then we go through to the uh, Avalon here. The Avalon is kind of a, a high-end um, uh, direct box, basically, which uh, I send my signal into the Avalon and then through to the Ampeg for kind of on-stage monitoring. For amplification, I'm using this Ampeg uh, head and cabinet. This is the uh, SVT VR, which is kind of a reissue, I think, of the 70s uh, Blue Line tube amp and uh, 410 cabinet below. Uh, the way I sort of use the amp, the, what, I like this amp because it, it's a pretty pretty nice reissue of the actual blue lines and I really like the vintage tones, particularly for electric basses. And this is great at recreating those. Um, but also what's nice about it is it actually has two channels so I can run my upright bass and my electric bass through the same amp and use it as a kind of a, a catch-all for the needs of this particular band. It's a fairly quiet folk band, so I mean things are, this is about as loud as I get it volume wise, I don't know what is that, probably around three or four. Um, and and it's, it's a pretty moderate clean sound, you know, uh, the, the, you know a pretty, a pretty middle settings, Not, nothing's too uh, jacked up let's say. This guy here is a 1974 uh, Fender P bass. Um, this is like a meat and potatoes instrument. Um, all original and uh, it's great. It's it was made actually. What uh, what I sort of love about this space is that it was married the body to the neck and the pots. They're dated the last week of 1974 and the first week of 1975. So sometime in that week, this base was sort of put together, which is the same week I was born. <laughs> usually the volume is set. Uh, I usually open it up pretty full and control things from here. The tone is mostly opened up. I like kind of a little bit of growl with the, with the bass and stuff and the 70s basses are really have some really nice kind of high-end growl with them which I miss in some of the 60s P basses that I, I play so this is kind of my go-to P bass the toasted marshmallow pork chop I don't actually know what the gauge of strings on here the Tomastics Tomastic flat ones I use flat ones on all my electric basses so um, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the gauges are to be honest with you I try not to change my strings very often. I change them when they break for electric basses. I go with the James Jamerson uh, school of philosophy. Uh, mostly I'm uh, using fingers to play the bass in this band. I do play pick sometimes, but not, not with this set. And uh, this here is a 1967 Hoffner Beetle bass. And, uh, oh, it's, I lost a screw, look at that. Literally, I just have to find that. Uh, this bass, actually, funny enough, I bought eight years ago around the corner of the Chicago Music Exchange uh, on a tour with this band in 2012. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, a, you know, a great 
sounding bass. This is kind of called the Beatle bass, of course, because Paul McCartney made this famous in the 60s uh, of Paul McCartney of Beatles fame. And, um, and yeah, it's, uh, this, I think there's Stahl Kaufner strings on this one, actually. I've never, I haven't changed the strings in eight years or seven, what, six years on the bass uh, because they just sound great. I mean, they just sound old and thuddy and give me the vintage tones that I love with electric bass. This is the original. This is, I think, they went to what they call the Blade pickup around 1967 with the Hoffner. Um, the settings, I mean, I run, every, I run a good balance of both pickups and you know, kind of just keep things pretty middle, middle of the road. I mean, I play this usually on two or three songs a night and that will maybe four, four or five, something like that. So yeah, this is my bass gear for, uh, for, for my setup with Great Lake Swimmers. And you can check out Great Lake Swimmers on Twitter at uh, Great Lake Swim and on Instagram at great underscore lake underscore swimmers.